Oh, I've got a big update this video. You know what? I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like so we all have an idea here. Um, I'm going to hit play and check this out. So I play a card from this player's hand, and then I end my turn. Play a card from that player's hand. Oh, yeah. This is cool. And if you check out our deck manager, notice how um, each player's hand size is slowly decreasing. So I'll play another card and turn, play a card. And we can keep looping through this until we played all of our cards and the latest card shows up on the top. This is really cool. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Of course, we ran into an error at the end once everybody kind of ran out of cards. Almost everybody. No, you know what? I think that's everyone. We're at size zero for all those. All right, let's get into it. So lots of changes that we're making today. Um, my code may look significantly different from yours at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all of the changes here. We started with two new variables. So you want to include this in your set of variables. I also included, just for organizational purposes, a region containing all the variables so that I could minimize and open it back up as needed. But these two new variables are an int current player index and an int current card index. It helps us keep track of our current player, whoever's turn it is, and then whatever card they select. We're gonna change this later um, so that it, it's actually like a selectable card, but for right now it's just gonna be zero. So we have these two values and you need those. All right, now let's take a look at the next change we made. The next change is with the play card function. So in the play card function, previously we would automatically call show card. However, we're gonna comment that out because we don't wanna show the card. Instead, we wanna do a modified show card. Last time I showed you how to do a horizontal layout group and the horizontal layout group is great for trading card games, but not for other more traditional card games. So if you're making a trading card game, uh, this may or may not be a video for you. If you're making a more traditional card game, this might be your thing. You guys saw what it does. So if it sounds like something you want to include in your game, please pay attention. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop paying attention to play card. We're done with that. Let's go into the modified show card. What kind of changes did we make? So you'll notice this is much longer than show card. I wonder if you guys can hear the cat in the background. Um, in the show card, we only have a few lines. In the modified show card, we're starting with the same two lines. Um, I did change this to set parent instead of transform parent equals because Unity made that suggestion. They said it's a little bit better. Um, all right, anyway. So I got those first two lines, and then right after that, I put something called a switch. A switch checks a variable that you feed into it. In this case, we're using the int current player index. And depending on the value of that variable, it'll execute different things. So if the variable is equal to zero, then we're gonna do this. If the variable is equal to one, we're gonna do this. If it's equal to two, we're gonna do this. And then if it's equal to three, we're gonna do this. So when it's equal to zero, we're saying it's the player at the top because this is going to set the position of our card that we play to zero, which is zero, 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 plus 50, where 50 is going in the up direction. Up is zero, one, zero. Okay, so we're gonna go zero plus 50 in the y direction. If it's player one, then we're gonna to go to zero plus 50 in the x direction. If it's uh, player two, we're gonna go zero plus 50 in the negative y direction. And then if it's player three, we're gonna go 50 in the negative x direction. So this is what causes our cards to be in different places and it looks really nice from like a, a player's perspective because it actually gives, this is the feedback that they're seeing. They see the cards on the game board. I'm gonna go ahead and show you one more time what it looks like. So I'll press my magic button, hit end turn, and turn and turn so you really only see you know the card that's on the top but it's closest to the player who's playing it so that's a really good thing to have in terms of ui design it it's intuitive it tells you who played the card if you had just stacked all the cards in exactly the same place that'd be a problem because you wouldn't know who played the last card if you were to just like come in from out of nowhere but if someone was to walk into the room and then look at the screen they'd be able to tell okay it came from that player all right so what happens next? We're gonna use the same three lines at the end of our um, show card 
script. So we're not changing those. We're just copying and pasting those cards, or sorry, those lines. Great. So our modified show card is now complete. Remember to feed in card C, pass on that variable. The next thing we need to add to our script is the end turn function. So the end turn function is just going to do pretty much like one thing. Um, it's going to check if we're at the last player in the array. So the last player is uh, the one with index players length minus one. Because if there are four people in the array, the highest index would be three since it starts at zero. So if we're the last player, change the current player index back to zero. Otherwise, increase the index by one so that we can loop through our player index. Now we also want to, when we end our turn, we want to set our current card index back to zero. And this is important because we know if our player has a hand, then they'll at least have one card and that card will go with index zero. So it just kind of sets things up for the next player and it avoids um, issues that you'll run into possibly later. In the future, uh, we will actually be setting the value for this current card index. So that's when this line is going to come into play. For right now, whether you have it there or not, um, it's still going to work the same because we didn't actually change that value. All right, so that's it for the end turn function. Make sure you write that one. We made a couple more changes, for example, in update. Previously, we'd been using the alpha key three, and we kind of like filled in these numbers. But now that we have the variable placeholders, we're going to use the variables instead. That way, it'll choose whatever we tell it to. And the important part here is that the current player index will change. So we can use a card from any player, and the current card index will always be zero, at least for right now. But in the future, it might change. So I made those two changes right there. We can get rid of the fix this comment because we don't need that anymore. And I believe that is it for the script changes. Now let's go into the UI. We have a button here and we haven't used that in the past, but we're going to be using it now. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and create a UI button. And then when you create it, I want you to rename it so you can right click rename and call it end turn button. Now this button comes with a text pre-built onto it. You can align it center center if it's not already done so. If you wanna make the text show up a little bit better, change the color to darker. I don't know why the default is not dark, but you can change it to darker. Um, you can make it overflow, overflow if you want. I don't know, it's up to you. Go ahead and change the text box so that it shows end turn, and then rename it end turn button text or ETB text. Now we want to go into the end turn button. So you have to left click it in the hierarchy right over here. And then you're going to go to this on click menu. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that just so that we're on the same page. It should say on click list is empty. You click the plus and then we're going to search for a game object. You're going to have to look in the scene tab and look for the deck manager or whatever is holding your script. We're going to look for the script inside of that object and look for the end turn function. It's important that your end turn is public, otherwise you won't be able to use it in the button. All right, now we're ready. So we'll hit play, and uh, oh, you know what? There was one more change. Remember that layout group that we made last time? Yeah, we gotta get rid of that. So it's really easy to do. All you have to do is go to the horizontal layout master, and then just uncheck this box. If you uncheck that box, um, it will stop the horizontal layout group. If you do check that box, here's kind of what happens. It's a little bit weird. See how you, you just get the layout group. But if you uncheck that box, then we're going to get the intended behavior of what we want. So that's it. Um, I hope this video showed you something really cool. Um, remember, everything you do in play mode does not get saved, so do it out of play mode. We got our players playing their cards. This is awesome. And we can see the latest card. And you know what the coolest part is? Let's go to the, the actual game board here. And then our element zero is the 11 of hearts, the most recent card played. So we're going to use that in our future videos. See you guys next time. Oh yeah, remember, like and subscribe. I could really use the subscriptions.